How is everyone doing today? Awesome. Already. Thank you so much, valued guests, media friends, our POCO fans, as well as all those who are watching us over the live stream today. Welcome to the global premiere of POCO by Xiaomi. Make some noise, guys. Already. So we have lots to show you today. In the past couple of weeks, there have been lots of discussions about us on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook. So I'm going to try to dispel some myths for you today. All right? OK. My name is Alvin, and I'm head of POCO Global. So fasten your seatbelt and get ready for an exciting ride. Let's start with our logo, POCO by Xiaomi. POCO is a new sub-brand backed by Xiaomi. So as a small outfit within Xiaomi, the POCO team actually has the freedom to design products from scratch. Yet at the same time, we get Xiaomi's resources. The POCO team is in charge of product, marketing, and sales, which means you can actually expect a different, somewhat new experience compared to what you're used to with the Xiaomi phones. Now, this arrangement is great, it's interesting, it's cool, because we have the backing of one of the greatest smartphone brands in the world today. Xiaomi is the number one India smartphone brand and the number four in the world. In fact, Xiaomi has six factories in India producing millions and millions of smartphones every single month. And not just that, according to a recent third-party survey, Xiaomi is the leader in after-sales service with over a thousand service centers in India, just in case you have some concerns, which we don't expect to have. And as we all know, quality is the lifeline of our business. We take quality very, very seriously. And I'm pleased to tell you that POCO takes the exact same strict and high quality standards that you would expect from a Xiaomi phone. Already, I'm pleased to tell you that Manu is also in the audience with us today. So may I invite Manu to say hi to the audience here? Thank you, Manu. Now let's take a look at the POCO team. You can see there are eight of us, and we look pretty happy, right? Pretty well rested, pretty happy, pretty relaxed. We come from very different background. It is a very diverse team. Some of us grew up in Singapore, in China, in India, and in America. But despite such cultural differences, we actually share one thing in common, and that is our passion for smartphones. All of us had many years of working experience in the mobile industry, and we believe this time we can contribute something different and inject some new energy to the industry. Many months ago, the eight of us sat together and thought a little bit more about how the smartphone industry is being developed. Where is it heading? What are the trends? We realize that if we really drill down to the basics of smartphones, there are five or six areas that constitute the essentials of a flagship smartphone. They are the camera setup, battery, ID, display, and of course, the brain of the smartphone, its processor. But as competition becomes more fierce, as innovation becomes incremental, many new brands, many big brands, they're trying to come up with new features years after years that some may argue may or may not be relevant to users. 
but they certainly add to the cost, which leads to this problem. The team has seen that there are more and more flagships being priced even more expensively year after year, some of which actually blew past the thousand US dollars price point, pricing out many consumers, many tech enthusiasts from the opportunity of trying the latest technologies. Poco wanted to build something that bucked this trend. If you think about it, why are the smartphones becoming more expensive? It's because a lot of these brands, they are trying to build the jack of all trades. They're trying to build the all-rounders that excels in every single aspect. But as we all know, in life, if you try to be good at everything, you end up not being best at anything. Which is why Poco's mission is to focus on innovations that truly matter. We are determined to build products that allow many, many consumers to be able to try out the latest technologies that truly make a difference in your lives. This is a very difficult task. It is no easy feat. But we feel like this is necessary. After many months of hard work, I'm pleased to tell you that Poco is proud to say that we are the champion of performance. <laughs> performance matters. Speed matters. The ability to enjoy your smartphone on a day-to-day -day basis without any lags matters. Do you agree? So our first product embodies this philosophy, this belief, this need that performance should be a basic right to smartphone users. We are proud to call this cool product the Poco F1. And of course, we need to give it the most powerful slogan ever. And we are calling it the true Master of Speed. I really think you will all love it. So, without more suspense, without further ado, let me welcome the most popular, the most handsome, Jay, the new head of product for Poco Global on stage. Thanks, man. Hello, everyone. How are you? It's nice to finally be back here in India. My name is Jay Mani, and I'm the head of product for Poco Global. And today, I'm really honored to be presenting our first product, the Poco F1. This has literally been one of my dream phones that is something that I've wanted to make for years now. And with Poco, we were able to start from scratch and make product decisions that, are, that result in a very different phone from what you see on the market today. So even if you think you already know everything about the phone, stick with us. We want to spend some time to explain to you why we did these things and why we think it results in a truly awesome experience. So let's get started. Yeah. All right. So today I'm going to talk about three things, performance, camera, and experience. And we believe that these three things have the biggest impact on how you ultimately feel about your phone. And because we're the master of speed, let's start with the most important thing, the performance. So for the Poco F1, we wanted to focus on the things that really matter for performance. And everybody knows that the most critical factor when it comes to performance is the chipset. And so the first decision we made was to use Qualcomm's top-of-the-line Snapdragon 845. And there are actually very few phones sold in India today that are using this chipset. But since we're focused on speed, this is the obvious choice. Snapdragon 845 uses a second-generation 10-nanometer FinFET process, 
This process offers clock speeds of up to 2.8 gigahertz while maintaining good battery life and good thermal performance. And the Adreno 630 GPU has a 30% improved performance versus the previous generation from Snapdragon 835. And this is an important point, which I'll touch on in a later slide. But this is a 30% improvement on Qualcomm's already super fast GPU. It absolutely flies for gaming, no matter how heavy. So Qualcomm also made great efforts to improve the AI performance. Snapdragon 845 has three times the performance on AI tasks when it is compared to 835. Uh, this helps a lot on things particularly around the camera, which is something that we'll uh, touch on later in the presentation. So let's look at how Snapdragon 845 stacks up to some of the other uh, Android flagship SOCs. Uh, here's the Kirin 970, the Exynos 9810. Uh, and you can see that the Snapdragon 845 performance is better. Uh, here we're showing the Antutu scores. It's about a 10% improvement versus uh, Samsung's chip. And this is what they use in all their flagship devices here in India. Uh, and over a 35% improvement when compared to the Kirin 970. But I mentioned the GPU earlier. So let's hone in on that specifically. We took a look at the GFX bench. This is Manhattan off screen. Uh, and this is where the 845 really shines. It's 30% better in GPU than the Exynos 9810, and more than 60% better than the Kirin 970. The Adreno 630 absolutely destroys the competition here. And as many of you know, GPU is something that's becoming more important today as people start playing the latest crop of mobile games, which are more graphics intensive. So if you're playing any of those games, you want the latest GPU not something that's one or even two generations old when it comes to GPU performance. So let's talk a little bit about peak scores. I think we talked about this number in a little bit uh, a little while ago. This was our Antitu benchmark. Uh, we reached nearly 300,000 in the peak score. And this makes it one of the fastest Android smartphones around. But P scores aren't the only thing that matter. Benchmarks don't tell the whole story. Because when running at peak speeds for a long period of time, the typical smartphone gets slower. You know, when you're doing things like gaming or running intensive apps, they tax the processor, which generates heat, and ultimately slows your phone down. As your phone heats up, the performance decreases. Hotter is slower. So we wanted to solve this. And we added something we're calling liquid cool. It's pretty sweet. What do you think? This is a water cooling technology. And basically, it's a copper heat sink with some water vapor inside. And it's placed on top of the chipset, which cools down your phone much more quickly, allowing it to run at higher speeds for much longer. So let's check this out inside the phone. Uh, so here's a quick illustration. The SOC is up there on the top left. And this is in a situation playing a game, start generating some heat. Uh, so in the Poco F1, we have this copper heat sink that sits on top of it. This is the, the blue line here. Uh, we can actually run that again. So this is the copper heat sink, the blue line. We'll run that again. So as you can see, what happens here is the heat generated by the SOC, generated by the SOC is distributed more evenly throughout the phone and cools down the CPU. So it can run at peak performance for a longer period of time. And when we compared this thermal performance to our, uh, in our labs, liquid cool dissipates heat 300% faster than devices without it. And this is really useful in practice. And so because of liquid cool, paired with the top of line Snapdragon 845, the Poco F1 is able to sustain peak performance for a longer period of time. And the big, flashy bench benchmark scores are nice, but we believe that its sustained performance is what really matters. So let's see how this translates in results. Uh, this is a test we ran versus the OnePlus 6. It's the same SOC without any uh, water cooling technology. 
Um, if you'll notice up at the top, the ambient temperature is hot for some places, but rather normal uh, here, particularly in Delhi. It's, it's an ambient temperature of 35 degrees. Um, and so what we did was we ran onto two six times. And this was to simulate peak performance over our, our intensive performance over a longer period of time. Uh, and this is the result from the first test. You know, it's about the same. Uh, so let's see what happens when we, when we start running this over time. So for the first few runs, again, performance is about the same. But as we start doing this over time, thermal control kicks in. And this is because without any water cooling, the phone starts to heat up, clock speed goes down, and ultimately, your performance degrades. So being able to run at this high level the entire time is what Snapdragon 845 paired with liquid cool really allows us to do. And this is what we mean when we say speed. We're not just talking about that big benchmark score, although it is pretty cool. Uh, we mean actual real-world speed. When you play a game for half an hour, it should be the same speed the whole time. And so we believe that Poco F1 has set a new standard for performance. All right, pretty cool so far? That was not a pun, not intended, but OK. Uh, so let's talk about my favorite thing, which is battery life. And for years, this has been a key feature that everybody tells us they love. It's one of the reasons why Redmi phones have been so successful. But typical flagship phones compromise on battery life. And generally speaking, in a flagship phone, you usually get around 3,000 mAh. Uh, and for some reason, if you want great battery life, you generally have to buy a mid-range phone. But since we were building the Poco F1 from the ground up, without any of this baggage, this trend really didn't make any sense to us. And so with the Poco F1, we put that same amazing 4,000 mAh battery that everybody loves. And this is a key product decision that we made early on. It seems like common sense. And almost everybody, whether it's enthusiasts or you know, your mom or dad, everybody wants better battery life. And yet, in the race to outdo one another, flagship devices seem to have forgotten this. And this 4,000 mAh battery is, is 30% higher than other popular models, things like the S9. And this really makes a difference in practice. So let's take a look at some of the numbers here. Uh, you have eight hours of gaming, 146 hours of music. I think that translates to around six days. Uh, but most importantly, it reduces anxiety. You, you don't need to constantly check your battery life. You don't need to worry about the next time you might be next to a power outlet. With a Poco F1, you get this great battery life, and finally, it's paired with a flagship SOC, the Snapdragon 845. And once you get used to phones with 4,000 mAh batteries, it's hard to change to anything else. And so I posted this uh, just now on Twitter, but we met with a bunch of you guys a couple, I think in January, a couple months ago. Um, and if you ask me, the most important thing is a 4,000 mAh battery. I actually don't think you need any sort of fast charging because it lasts the whole day. But we decided to include Quick Charge 3.0 because almost everybody across the board told us that you want both. And it doesn't just support it. We're including the 9-volt 2-amp charger in the box. Uh, of course, we couldn't reveal all of this stuff when we were talking about it at the time, but we did listen to what you guys told us. Uh, and I think it, it pretty much speaks for itself. There's a couple of other things we can show you later. So again, this comes in the box standard. All right, 4G+, plus, and I think this is something that's pretty new. Uh, we worked really closely with Qualcomm on this to make the network performance fast. This is one of the first devices with 4G+, plus here in India. So I can explain a little bit about it. Typically, your phone is connected to a single radio band. But with 4G+, Plus, it combines radio frequencies, different radio frequencies, to give you both faster network performance and better coverage. And it's important to note, one of the reasons why this is not very common here in India 
is the combinations that are required, the spectrum combinations that are required to support 4G Plus here are pretty unique. They're actually not really used anywhere else in the world. Thing other than speed, many of you make Volte calls, and this is where 4G Plus can also help you a lot. So the Poco F1, of course, supports dual Volte, and for those of you that do make Volte calls, you may have noticed that you tend to see more call drops indoors. And this, again, is where having com being able to combine two different frequencies lets us take advantage of both things. You get the high-quality audio you're used to, and then better coverage indoors from the lower frequency. So it's really, really useful. You'll see the icon once you get the phone in the top right of your, dis if your, of your display. Let us know what you think. It's a really new thing, and we're really glad to be able to bring it to India in one of the first devices ever. All right, let's talk about some other stuff with speed. Memory. So it's up to 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, up to 256 gigabytes of internal storage. And I want to point out this bottom thing over here. It's the UFS 2.1 storage. This is an area where having access to Xiaomi's scale and particularly supply chain is critical for our success. We're able to take advantage of that and ensure that all Poco F1s across the board will ship with UFS 2.1 storage. Another thing that you guys told us, I ran a bunch of polls on this a couple of months ago. Some of you will remember this. Uh, again, with 256 gigabytes of storage, you might think that people don't need it, uh, but we support an SD card here. It's expandable up to 256 gigabytes, uh, but it's more for being able to transfer content, not really to expand your content, and this is something that you all told us. Uh, so this is a hybrid SIM, and we made sure to add it in based on your feedback. Yeah, that's good. I should mention again that this is one of the few flagship devices that support SD cards. Usually, you have to go to a mid-range device to get that kind of thing. All right, let's do a quick summary on the product. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we made a bunch of decisions very early on. We wanted 845. We wanted great performance, but sustained performance, so we used liquid cool. And of course, we wanted the 4K battery. We have top-of-the-line RAM and ROM insured across every single device. 4G Plus and one of the first devices here in India. And QC 3.0, just to top it all off. Pretty crazy? All right, so with this hardware, we think that our phone can really stand up to any other phone in the industry. So we ran a test. This is on a game called Arena of Valor. It's using the Poco F1 versus the iPhone X. And what we did is we played three games in a row, measuring three things. FPS, thermal performance, and battery life. So let's take a look at the video and see how it works in practice.
So you get great performance, pretty much constant 60 FPS in both devices, but better thermal performance and better battery life. This is why we call it the master of speed. And it shows what you can do when you build something from scratch and are focused on doing something from the very beginning. And we think we really, really achieved it here. Can't wait for everybody to try it and give us some feedback on it, because I think it's pretty awesome. All right, next up, which I think is also something that people have a lot of questions about, and that's the design. So here's another thing, another trend in the current uh, flagships, glass. All current flagships should have glass. But is that what people really want? And this is one of the questions that we digged in with you guys many, many times to understand what you really think. So actually, let's do a quick poll here. How many people have a case on their phone? Raise your hand if you have a case on your phone. This journalists seem like they're typing, but it seems like I'm pretty sure most of you <laughs> have cases on their phones. When we spoke to the fans, Almost 100% of people told us that they put a case on their phone. But that kind of defeats the purpose of having a glass back. If you put a case on a phone with a glass back, all you have is a more fragile phone in a case. It, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, so we wanted to change this. We wanted to do something different. So this is your first look at the Poco F1, maybe first look, depending on what you've seen. We chose a single piece of hard-coated polycarbonate, which creates a seamless shape that's comfortable to hold. This is reinforced by an internal metal structure, and this makes sure that the phone feels really great and sturdy in the hand. I think if you recall, we brought around, uh, I believe it was the Mi 4i or the Mi 4c, and we had a big discussion over what people preferred, and everybody loved that phone. When you pick it up, you can feel the quality, and when you pick up the Poco F1, you can see the similarities there. Polycarbonate also has a big functional impact. We're able to give the precisely curved 3D body, and it's much easier to manufacture compared to 3D glass. With this 3D body, this is why we can fit the bigger 4000 mAh battery with liquid cool in a phone that still feels great in the hand. On the bottom, we have a USB Type-C port, which again supports uh, Quick Charge 3.0 with a 9-volt, with a 2-amp, 18-watt charger in the box. <laughs> Maybe I can just skip this one, so. <laughs> Uh, it does have a dedicated amp. I think you know, some of you on some other Xiaomi devices really loved audio out of the headphone jack. Its audio on this device is pretty awesome. Uh, so what about the front? On the front side of the phone, it's a 6.18 Full HD Plus display. It's an LCD display. Uh, it has a maximum brightness of 500 nits. Uh, another thing everybody said, we want Gorilla Glass. So we put 2.5D Corning Gorilla Glass on this for durability. Um, and you might be wondering what's going on up at the top, so we can dig into that a little bit. So we have over here all the components. This is the standard stuff, the proximity sensor, uh, the 20 megapixel front camera. Uh, but to the left of the earpiece, we've added these components for infrared face unlock. Uh, and this gives you face unlock even in the dark. Uh, so we have two things here. There's the infrared light, which you'll see if you, once you start using the phone. And then there's the lens, which actually takes the image. Uh, so we have a video here. I was the model for this video. Uh, so let's take a look at how, how well it works.
I mentioned I was the model because I'm really not good at modeling. The technology is a lot cooler than my facial reaction. Uh, I think the best facial reaction is at the end, which is the last shot we did, so I was super happy about it. Uh, but in our internal lab tests, we've measured in completely dark environments, face unlock works in less than 0.4 seconds. And now the problem with the regular face unlock that's done through uh, the normal front camera is that in the dark it just doesn't work. And if it works, you have to just max out the brightness on the display, which is the last thing you'd want to do when it's night. So face unlock with the Poco F1 works really well, even in the dark. All right, so I mentioned what's going on up at the top. If you don't like the notch, you can just change it in settings. It's pretty simple. All right, I mentioned audio. Let's talk a little bit more about audio. Poco F1 has uh, Dirac HD sound, so you get, again, really high quality sound. It has, we talked a couple months ago about uh, Smart PA, which is a smart power amplifier that helps you get really loud audio through the speaker uh, without any distortion. In the Poco F1, we actually have dual Smart PA, uh, so it's even better than, than any device we've shipped before. Uh, and the audio during landscape mode, we do audio out of the earpiece for a stereo-like effect. Again, audio on this phone is really cool. Uh, you guys should definitely try it out. All right, Poco F1 comes in three colors. The one we've been showing here is called uh, the graphite bat black. Excuse me. Uh, there's also the steel blue, which has a nice metallic sheen. Uh, here's another view of that from the front and the back. Uh, this next one is my favorite. This is called the Rosso Red. This is not like one of those tricks that looks good on a slide or whatever. Like, go check it out in the experience zone. It actually looks really good. It has a nice uh, kind of like tactile matte uh, finish. Another view of that one. Definitely check this out. It looks, I think, really good on photos as well. Uh, so we've talked a lot about Xiaomi, how Xiaomi helps us. Um, so this is some of the quality tests that we do. You guys are familiar with some of these. Uh, I didn't notice this one. I'm not sure if I've seen it before. My favorite one is down here at the bottom, which is the dust test, where we roll the phone in a cornflower environment. Uh, don't recommend doing that, but I'm glad that somebody did it somewhere. Uh, so this is an example of why relying on Xiaomi for quality really helps us. We can deliver a great phone with great performance, but ensure the highest quality. OK. So I think every. flower environment. Uh, don't recommend doing that, but I'm glad that somebody... It's called the Poco F1 Armored Edition. And the Armored Edition is made with real Kevlar Aramid fiber. This is a key material in a lot of extreme sports gear because of its durability and lightness. It's actually imported from American, an American company called DuPont. It's also used, it was one of the major components in the spacesuit. This is you know, uh, the thing that protected some of the astronauts during the Apollo 11 mission to space. But I think Kevlar is more commonly known as the material that's used in bulletproof vests. This phone is not bulletproof, but it uses the same material, uh, which is, again, really, really cool. Uh, so you want to see what it looks like? Pretty awesome, right? I think particularly on this version, the red accents around the camera look really great up there. Uh, Kevlar is scratch and wear resistant, uh, and it really feels amazing in your hand. It has a really nice, grippy texture. So we didn't want to make just another glass phone. For those of you who told us they wanted something cool, Kevlar is most definitely cool. It's a phone that you really appreciate when you pull it out of the box, but you won't feel the need to immediately slap a case on it because it's too slippery and fragile. We think you'll really, really love this phone. All right, so let's take a look at all four of them together. Again, steel blue, that's the Rosso Red in the middle. Uh, the Armored Edition made with real Kevlar, uh, and this is the graphite black that we've been talking about. All right. 
So we have a product video showing off some of these phones. Let's take a look. All right, so if you were unhappy when you heard about the materials of this phone, hopefully it makes more sense now. When you put a case on it, you have a more durable phone, and if you really want something that feels premium, you have Kevlar, which is actually different. It doesn't look like just another glass phone. All right, I think the next natural section is the camera. This is another area where we really relied on Xiaomi's expertise, uh, both in hardware and software. And our goal with the camera was to make it easy to get a great photo on the first try. So coming to the hardware, the Poco F1 main camera has a Sony IMX363. This is the same sensor that we're using in, our top, in Xiaomi's top of the line flagship phones, the Mi 8, the Mix 2S. And the secondary sensor here is a five megapixel sensor give you depth information for those portrait mode shots. The primary camera sensor has massive 1.4 micron pixels. The IMX363 is very similar to the IMX362 that Google used in the Pixel 2 last year. And basically, more light per pixel means better low light photography. The main camera also has something called dual pixel autofocus. This gives up to 12 million focusing, point at any, at focusing points at any one time, which is almost 30 times the number of focusing points compared to the traditional PDAF. The result is that we have a lot more data to find out what the object of focus is and do it really, really quickly. Again, this is something uh, Google has in the Pixel, Samsung has in their top of the line uh, Galaxy and Note phones. Uh, so the Poco F1 went through a vigorous cycle of camera tuning in our labs. We spent a lot of time working in particular on the focusing speed, especially in In low light, that's where the OnePlus 6 really struggles, because it has the smaller pixel size without dual pixel autofocus, um, compared to the S9, again, pretty similar performance uh, in low light focusing. Uh, so that's Poco F1 focusing, we really believe, lets you shoot in the blink of an eye. Again, the goal is to make it so that you can get the right photo on the first shot, and we have a couple of examples here of sort of action shots. Uh, so there's obviously a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of movement in this photo, um, but the main object of focus, this guy doing a one handstand, uh, he's still in focus, and you still have good colors in the background. Here's another great example. Uh, obviously, a lot of movement here, um, and you can see how the dual pixel autofocus lets you capture this moment really, really quickly, which is something that, that is much, much more difficult to do with regular PAF. 
Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on in this photo. Uh, I guess this like skateboarder is like practicing for holy or something. I'm not really sure, but it does make for a good example. Again, the 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 guy is in focus, even though there's all these kind of smoke bombs going off. And this is one of those things where if you don't get the photo on the first try, I guess you need to buy more smoke bombs and set them off or something. It's, it's not easy to do again. Uh, so as many of you know, more so than just the hardware, the software is important. Uh, and because we're using the same main sensor that we used in the Mi 8, uh, and we're also using Snapdragon 845, so we have the same ISP. Our camera tuning team was able to start with the same software baseline from the Mi 8. This gave us a huge head start on camera tuning. And things like the AI camera in particular take a lot of time and resources to perfect. So it was super helpful to be able to rely on Xiaomi's camera team when we started work on the Poco F1 camera. Uh, many of you know how AI works uh, in cameras. So basically, we've trained our algorithms on thousands of images for different scenes. First, the camera tries to identify what you're shooting, and then it automatically adjusts the, the camera settings to try to capture the optimal photo. Uh, we have a couple of examples here. Um, this is backlight detection in uh, sort of photos of people. Um, so this is kind of the, the phone without uh, the AI mode. You know, it captures the person in the foreground, but the problem is because there's a backlight here, kind of all the details in the clouds uh, go away. Um, whereas if you compare it with the AI version, I can do that again. Particularly like in the upper left over there, you can see how adjusting things like the white balance, ISO, shutter speed really, really help here. Uh, we also have an option where if you want to do uh, a silhouette, just tap that button, you can get a more dramatic um, Instagram-worthy photo. It's pretty cool. Uh, so beyond uh, portraits, the Poco F1 is able to intelligently recognize 206 different scenes ac across 25 categories. Um, so let me, these icons are things that you'll see inside the camera app when you use it. Uh, so this is the default position, just says AI. Here we're shooting uh, an image of food. When it recognizes, that icon will change. So here it says food, and then we adjust the camera settings based on this to try to give you an optimal photo. Uh, we have a couple of examples here. This is kind of a building example. Uh, this is without AI. Um, it's actually pretty decent. The problem is the main object of focus here is this building, obviously, in the front. The lighting isn't that great. Um, and if you look at some of the line, lines in buildings, the sharpness on the lines are really important because there's a lot of straight lines. Um, so if we compare it to the AI version, it's a pretty big difference, right? Uh, especially the lighting, um, sharpness on the building, uh, details in the clouds. Actually, if you think that we kind of faked this photo, uh, you can see like these people over here, like this photo was taken in the same lighting condition. These people are in both photos. Uh, so the details are much better, and you don't have to do any work. We recognize that this is a photo of a building and change uh, the settings automatically. Uh, here's another tough shot looking directly at the sun. Everything is washed out. Uh, you can't really even see the sun. Um, if we jump, particularly check out the buildings here in the front. If we jump to the AI version, you get a much deeper red. If you look at the sun in the background, again, you can identify uh, the shape. Um, and then you see different colors in the sky. You can just jump again. Uh, so it really helps quite a bit. This is a landscape shot. You'll see that it recognizes um, landscape. Uh, We've also spent time optimizing uh, the AI algorithms for India, training it on different scenes, different types of people, uh, things like jewelry, colorful temples, different kinds of food. Um, and so you'll see a lot of these results when you take, take photos here. We have a camera tuning team uh, that's taken thousands of photos to, to help train these algorithms. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of the snaps. So I'm a little biased, because I think any photo with a dog in it is pretty awesome. Uh, but as many of you know who've tried to take a photo like this, dogs just do not sit still. Uh, so it's really important to lower the shutter speed to try to get um, you know, a, a clear focusing on the dog. The problem with lowering the shutter speed is that the phone doesn't let in enough light. So here we've kind of combined the settings from the shutter speed and then made sure that HDR kicks in to get enough light in this photo so you get some nice colors in the background. There, 
uh, if you look up, this uh, is kind of a lake. If you look up there at the top, you can see actually the ripples of the water. Again, um, these things can kind of be blurred uh, depending on the focusing speed. But then if you don't have uh, the right HDR settings, um, then you won't have enough light in the photo. So even in challenging conditions, this is indoor low lighting. Building features are captured in sharp detail without uh, much graininess. All right, so coming to the front camera. So on the front, we have a 20 megapixel high resolution camera. Uh, this is actually the same camera module that we're using in the Mi 8. So again, with software, we're able to start, have a huge head start just importing the same software baseline for the front camera. Uh, so you get high resolution photos, and then in low light, we do the four in one pixel binning to give you a super pixel here. Uh, this gives you an effective 1.8 micron pixel. And this, again, is, is used primarily in low light. Uh, we also optimized the AI beautify mode, uh, tuned it, again, specifically for India. Um, it really enhances your selfies. We've talked about it a lot over the past. Um, but it's a lot faster uh, due to the AI chip here on the Snapdragon 845. Uh, much like the rear camera, we also identify a bunch of scenes in the front camera. Uh, there aren't as many. Um, situations with selfies, but we try to make sure you get a lot of details out of the background. It's up to 10 different scenes. Um, so here's a couple of quick, quick snaps. Um, again, 20 megapixels here helps a lot for the, the resolution. Um, I think Xiaomi's bokeh algorithm is really, really good. Uh, details here are really sharp. Uh, also works in group selfies. This is something that is particularly popular here in India. Make sure that we get both subjects in focus. The blurring effect is good. Uh, here's an example of the pixel binning. Um, this is actually, it's difficult to show, but the environment is a really, really low light. Um, so the fact that we can get a usable good photo is a result of these uh, effective 1.8 micron pixels. So the Poco F1 cam front camera works pretty amazingly well. I encourage everybody to try it out. So that's the camera. We build on top of Xiaomi's expertise, both in hardware and software, and then spend months tuning the Poco F1 to give you superior image quality. We really hope you like it. All right, so that's performance and camera. Let me talk about the third thing, which is experience. And the software experience on the Poco F1 is designed for power users. It's for those of you who value performance over everything else. And we worked on a new software experience. It's called MIUI for Poco. It's a brand new interface that prioritizes speed and fluidity. So there's three components in MIUI for Poco. Uh, the first is the all-new Poco launcher, which I'll get into in a little bit. The second is something we call the turbocharged engine. This is what powers a lot of those under-the-hood optimizations for speed and fluidity. And the third thing is a focus on fast updates, which again is a piece of feedback that we heard from all of you uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, so let me start with the app, uh, the, the Poco launcher. Um, this is probably uh, one of the most noticeable differences that you'll see between the regular version of MIUI and MIUI for Poco. Uh, and the Poco launcher comes with two main features. The first is an app drawer, uh, and the second is some customizations uh, you know, to give you some more options, things that really make Android great. Um, so the app drawer is probably the most commonly pointed out difference when people say, you know, like, stock Android versus MIUI. People say, I just want an app drawer. Uh, and the reason is because it gives you this convenient way to look at a sorted list of your apps. Uh, so let's take a look at how the stock Android app drawer looks like. Um, so here we have the app drawer, uh, sorted list of apps, recents up at top, and then the search bar uh, all, the way at the, all the way up at the top. So in, in uh, MIUI for Poco, we brought the search bar down to the bottom. And this is because that's where your thumb is naturally, especially with the longer displays. It's a lot harder to search when it's up there. Uh, so again, makes it faster. Looks pretty similar, but, it, but you know, a slightly improved function. Outside of app search, uh, we have uh, the ability to group things by categories. Um, so we have the same recents up there. Um, and then we create this tab, which automatically groups your apps into categories. Uh, and this is something that we have seen from MIUI. This is how most people organize their home screen, is they put all of these apps into categories. Uh, so in the Poco launcher, we do it for you. Uh, all these things are sorted automatically. 
Um, of course, if, if you install another app, it'll just show up. You know, if you happen to install another communication app, it'll just show up automatically. Uh, super useful. Uh, we have another cool feature, um, which actually I use a lot now, uh, and it's the ability to group apps by color. Uh, so when you turn this on, you get this nice uh, set of colors down here. So here we click on the, the green one, and it, it just brings up all the apps by color. I thought that I always looked in the app drawer alphabetically, but you'll notice that when an app happens to change the icon, it becomes very difficult to find. Uh, so I found myself using this uh, quite a bit. Privacy is also something that we focused on. Uh, so we have another cool little feature. Uh, it's hidden app icons. Swipe twice from the left. Uh, you can create your own password and then put apps in there um, as you like. Uh, so Android users, again, love customizing their phones. Uh, another thing we did is we support third-party icon packs, things that you can install from the Play Store. Um, so here we, we kind of shuffle through a couple of these icons. This is another area where that color search really helps because different um, icon packs change the color, which just like throws me completely off. Um, super cool, super useful. Uh, so that's the Poco launcher. Um, and actually, uh, we will make it available. We plan to make it available uh, in beta next week. Uh, so you can download this on other devices um, as well. All right. Uh, so that's the Poco Launcher, the first thing. Um, the second thing is the turbocharged engine. Um, and this, again, is a focus on performance. That's one of the things that people say. We, we want better performance. Uh, so we're going to talk about three things. There's a lot of stuff going on under the hood. Uh, but we're going to talk about three main results here. Um, faster app startup, uh, better performance for your foreground app, uh, and a much faster uh, and more responsive uh, swiping experience. Let's, let's dig into these categories. First thing is faster app startup. This is powered by our, our VIP launch booster. We actually have a little bit of a uh, animation here. Basically, what we do is we, we allocate some dedicated resources for app startups. Uh, so when you start up a new app, instead of trying to get new resources, we already have a fast lane available to make sure that you have enough resources to start an app immediately. Uh, we've actually tuned this uh, for the most popular apps uh, here. So the startup time is really fast, particularly for these apps. Uh, and it's 28% faster when we did some comparisons with some other popular, um, some other popular OSs with the same, same hardware. Uh, we actually, I believe, yeah, we have a video here. So let's take a look at this. All right, so with these optimizations, uh, we took about 36 of the apps versus 19 for the OnePlus uh, 6. All right, so that's, that's app startups. The third thing is uh, a faster foreground app experience. So basically what we do here is we try to prioritize resources to the foreground app because that is what you're actually using. Um, so typically on Android, uh, there's a lot of processes running in the background, and resources are kind of distributed evenly. Uh, so basically, we use something called dynamic allocation. Um, the foreground app here is the, the little blue app down here. Uh, and we try to take all of the system resources, CPU, RAM, ROM, uh, not ROM, RAM, uh, and allocate it to that foreground app. Because again, that's, that's what you're really doing. Uh, and you probably don't care about the performance of those background applications. And this makes a big difference, particularly in gaming scenarios. This is a uh, mobile MOBA called Arena of Valor. I'm actually really good at this game, so if anybody wants to challenge me, let me know. Um, but it's not only the RAM and CPU. Uh, we also prioritize bandwidth to the foreground app. Uh, so if we click up here, 
Um, you know, this is if you happen to be downloading something in the background, what we do is we prioritize the resources, uh, make sure that all of your bandwidth goes into this foreground app so you have a good ping. All right. Uh, so the third thing is a faster and more responsive swiping experience. Uh, and as a power user, we want to make sure that you get more immediate feedback when you interact with apps. Uh, so we've done two things here. Um, the first thing here is the left. On the left, you can see Poco for BUI. Uh, basically, this is um, it's the touch response time. So it's when your finger touches the phone, how quickly we can detect the touch, how quickly the system detects the touch. And we've actually improved this by 20%. Again, here is uh, better swiping animations. On the left, you have Poco from EUI. Uh, we've made the swipe animations 22% faster. This is something that there's kind of a look and feel change that people uh, talk about a lot. Um, and we've optimized this particularly for, for uh, Poco from EUI. MIUI for Poco, sorry. So overall, these two things give us 21% better uh, swiping performance um, than before. Uh, and again, we have some other videos comparing this to uh, one of our competitors. with Android 8.1, uh, but we will have the Android Pi update, the P update uh, in Q4 of this year. Um, that's, again, the latest time we plan to do it uh, much faster than that, um, because we know this is important for all of you. Um, and of course, uh, it ships with Project Treble, which is one of the things that makes it easier for us to do these quick updates. It also, if you really love AOSP, it makes it easy for you to just slap an AOSP build on there. Uh, speaking of some of those custom ROMs, uh, we will do our best to support custom ROMs. Uh, I think given the hardware that we're talking about, I suspect that this device will be pretty popular with the custom ROM crowd. Uh, and as with you know, Xiaomi devices, unlocking the bootloader won't void your warranty. Um, so the kernel source uh, will be available next week. Uh, it's the 29th. We'll post it in the same place. It's always posted on the, the MeCode GitHub uh, repository. All right, so that's, that's MIUI for POCO. Three things, most visible, the POCO launcher, uh, the turbocharged engine um, for you know, faster and more fluid performance, uh, and then a focus on fast updates, uh, which includes both security and OS, baseline OS updates. All right, so we have a summary video here. Uh, let's take a look.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, one thing I forgot to cover. I think notifications is something that people talk about a lot. Many of you probably used uh, MIUI 10. Uh, if you notice, uh, our goal there is to try to get both um, appearance and functionality on par with uh, Android P. If you look at it, it really looks the same. Uh, we'll have the MIUI 10 update out for this device really, really quickly. All right. To summarize, and this might take me a little while, I think. <laughs> so we started, again, with Snapdragon 845, top of the line performance. Um, it was the obvious choice. Uh, but we did something cool. We perf I, again, pun not intended there. We did something cool, but we, uh, we paired it with liquid cool technology so you get not only good peak performance, but sustained performance. Uh, my personal favorite thing, the 4000 mAh battery, um, and we added Quick Charge 3.0, because I know many of you would have asked us for it, uh, which ships in the box. Uh, we have fast memory, 8 gigabytes, up to 8 gigabytes DDR4X, up to 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, and again, all of this is UFS 2.1. Uh, up here at the top, we have, uh, again, leveraging Xiaomi's camera expertise. We're using the same main sensor that we use in the Mi 8, the same front camera module that we use in the Mi 8. Um, and it's the same Snapdragon 845, so we have the same ISP. And again, we got a huge head start in software tuning because we're able to import um, some of those settings. Uh, and then uh, we also have IR for face unlock uh, with the cool video that I shot as a model. But in practice, it works really well. Uh, and because it works in the dark, it never kind of ruins your habit. You can get used to it, um, and it just always works. Uh, and then MIUI for Poco. Um, with the app drawer, uh, the turbocharged engine for better performance, um, and then a focus on updates. It's pretty amazing, right? So this, again, is the result of intentional product decisions that we made in the beginning. And it was stuff that we could do because we started from scratch. We could ignore trends that we think didn't really make sense. We didn't think it made sense to have another glass phone just because all other phones have glass. Uh, but we know that many of you cared about it, so we made that kick-ass Kevlar version. Uh, everybody wants a bigger battery, so we made sure we had this huge battery. And I think the end result is awesome. I mentioned in the beginning that this is a phone, this is a type of phone that I've wanted to make. It's a phone that I think hits all the right boxes. It's really pretty amazing. Uh, and I think. Probably the next thing that everybody wants to know is the price. Uh, but before we get into the price, first, let me introduce to you Mancho, who is Poco's GM for India. Really pretty amazing. Uh, and I think probably the next thing that everybody wants to know is the price. Uh, but before we get into the price, first, let me introduce to you Mancho, who is Poco's GM for India. For Poco in India. Talking of India, let me start with just as Jay and Alvin mentioned, we are glad that POCO is being backed by the strengths of Xiaomi. Today, Xiaomi is the number one smartphone brand in the country. And it is rated by Red Quanta as the best in class after sales service provider. I'm so happy to announce that POCO F1 will be supported by all the thousand service centers of Xiaomi in India. We are also very happy to mention that POCO F1 will be made in India. Thank you. We are actually leveraging the supply chain ecosystem created by Xiaomi. Today, Xiaomi has six manufacturing facilities across India, and they will be supporting POCO for the local manufacturing. Now, this is very, very important for 
hitting aggressive price points in this market. Oh, did I talk about the price? So I think all of us here are waiting for this moment. Am I right? Yeah. All right. So before going to the price, let's look at the other smartphones in the similar category. We have here the Poco F1 compared with OnePlus 6, which is powered with Snapdragon 845, does not have liquid cooling, comes with a 3,300 mAh battery. The 6 plus 64 variant is priced at 3499, while the Samsung Galaxy S9 comes with a Exynos 9810, has a liquid cooling, but with a 3,000 milliamp battery. The 4 plus 64 variant is priced at a whopping 57,900 rupees. The Poco F1 comes with a 6 GB RAM and a 64 GB variant. Any guesses on the price? OK, I heard 25 there. OK, I'm hearing many, many different prices. So let's go for it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Poco F1, the 6 plus 64 variant, is priced at 20 triple nine. Here, I would want to mention, we have taken meticulous measures to ensure that we are pricing the phone as honest as possible, despite many barriers. Let it be the currency fluctuations. Let it be the right product decisions and let it be the support system which we are getting from Xiaomi. This helps us achieve this aggressive pricing. But that's not all, folks. We have more. For those who want a bit more, we actually have a little bit more. Poco F1 also comes with the 6 GB RAM and 128 GB variant as well. And this is priced at? <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Let's see that. <laughs> 23 triple nine. We also mentioned that we are trying to help here the PAR users. For those PAR users who just want it all, there is a massive 8 GB RAM and a 256 GB storage variant as well. And this is priced at 28999. Now, going to my favorite variant, the Armored Edition. The Poco F1 Armored Edition comes with a unique Kevlar back, which is actually badass if you have to ask me. Poco F1, the armored edition, comes with the 8 GB RAM and a 256 GB storage variant. And this is insanely priced at 32, OK? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Let's look at the price. 29 triple nine. It really can't get any better than this, is it? <laughs> but actually, it may be. We are actually partnering with our HDFC bank here. And for the very first sale, we are giving a 1,000 rupees instant discount. Now, what does this mean? This literally translates to Poco F1, the 6 plus 64 variant at 19 triple nine. So this makes Poco F1 the world's only Snapdragon 845 flagship 
priced under 20,000 rupees. We are very happy to announce this today. <laughs> Thank you. So for the first launch of the sale, we have POCO F1, the 6 plus 64, priced at 19999, the 6 plus 128 GB variant, priced at 22999, and the 8 plus 256 GB, priced at 27999 for the first sale. We also have a never seen before geo offer, where we are extending up to 8,000 rupees of instant benefits and up to six terabytes of high-speed data. I honestly do not know what we will be doing with six terabytes, but here it goes for all the power users there. Now, POCO F1, even though it's incredibly beautiful, we are shipping it with a free soft case for all our India users, which is included inside the box, free of cost. Today, we are also launching a few new accessories of POCO in India. The first one is an ultra-slim hard case. This actually has a very beautiful matte finish and gives a very comfortable hand feel to it. Like, you can really feel comfortable holding the phone with this case. This is priced at 399 rupees. We also have the second variant, which is a Kevlar finish armored case. And this is being priced at 799. The third accessory also we are launching today, and that is for the first time ever in India. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Poco is actually introducing the first official mobile skins for Poco F1. We have four unique designs to start with, and all of this will be priced at 299 rupees. Right? Now we talked about our first sale. So let's talk about availability. <laughs> Poco of Fun is going to be an online exclusive product which will go on sale at 12 p.m. 29th August 2018 on me.com and our exclusive partner, Flipkart. We would like to thank Flipkart for believing in our vision. I am super excited for this because it's just a week from now, right? Uh, <laughs> thank you. So guys, you just witnessed the global launch of POCO in India today. It will also be making its way to 50 plus global markets here in the world. In fact, we'll be having three new launches on 27th August in Jakarta, Paris, and in Hong Kong. To summarize, we have three variants of POCO F1. The 6 plus 64 is priced at 20 triple nine. The 6 plus 128 is priced at 23 triple nine. The 8 plus 256 variant is priced at 28 triple nine. The armored edition retails at 29 triple nine. So you, if you see it, all of POCO F1 variants are priced under 30K. I have one thing to say about this. This is really mind-blowing. Isn't it, guys? Yes. Yeah. This brings us to the end of this beautiful show. Now I'd like to invite Alvin, Jay, and Sir Manu Jain, our VIP guest, to have a quick photo opportunity with POCO F1.
All right. This brings us to the end of this beautiful show. Thank you to all our Poco fans, our media colleagues, and our partners who joined us today. We'd also like to thank all our fans who have joined us via the live stream. None of this would have been possible without the support of all of you. We hope to see you soon. Signing off for today, thank you.